What's good? It's your boy Wonka Veli back again with another pointless you know, end of video, no, end of year video. I done these as a tradition since 2011. My thoughts on 2011, thoughts on 2012, thoughts on 2013 shits. And it's a tradition I want to keep going. Now, those have been years of growth. Unlike this year, in terms of subscribers, where 2011 I gained 30 subs, 2012 I gained like 100. It was quite impressive. Wait, did I get one? No, I didn't. Well, I know I got a lot. Like I was getting like 50 for 2012 and 2013. So those have both been years of growth. This one, I've stayed somewhere within the 160s, 170s range. At one point, I was in 181st, but so far, I want to get to the 250s range. That's a goal of mine. That's been a goal of mine since at least 2012. Why? Because it's a goal that I've seen a lot of people on Tumblr like set for themselves when they want to break out to YouTube. Not the Dice Scum Tumblr crowd, like, the Tumblr crowd, that's basically all about the makeup shit, the beauty shit, the theme shit, the shallow shit, like, talking about relationship crap. You had the, like, blue pill, normal side of fuck blur. That was, like, some of the goals that they had for themselves, where they would work with an idea and keep on that shit. I gotta clean my shit right now up. I just have no respect for y'all motherfuckers, you know what I said? Like, uh, in my LP videos, I do that shit all the fucking time. I'm always leaving the freaking room. And even now, in this uh, movie recording, I'm doing the same exact shit. No respect whatsoever. Anyway, I think that politics has really declined for me as an interest of mine. And I don't like saying that because I've seen other YouTubers with like a really focused interest of theirs that they break away from. And it always seems shallow and selfish when they go from focusing a lot on this one thing to breaking out into something else completely different. I think that's fucked up. Like, in all honesty... I should be about the politics shit. I should be about that. Now, I have done Let's Plays in the past. I've always done Let's Plays. I've been LPing games since 2009. Just that I deleted most of them. But yeah, I've done tons of Let's Plays. And it's never been a big problem. Until now. When I first started... I wanted to do a Let's Play of Mega Man X2 just to test out. Because I always figured, you know, I want to do at least one Let's Play. I've been thinking about it since at least 2011. 2012 and 2013, I've had too much, like, room on my... My startup disc filled with outtakes of my Mr. Wonka 7 rants. And I deleted some of them so that I could really have enough room to record Let's Play videos. I couldn't record anything unless it was direct from webcam. I couldn't even do the iMovie shit. So when I was put onto this QuickTime, I was like on point, because I have both, but QuickTime is a lot more efficient in terms of time management, in terms of all this stuff than iMovie. Although iMovie has the advantage of making it easier for you to edit your shit. Unlike QuickTime. I did Mega Man X2 as a test. That was freaking horrible because 
I was still adapting to controlling a SNES game, especially an action-oriented game, from my laptop. That was really stupid of me. Then I did Chrono Trigger. That's like still my favorite LP. But it was shitty at the same time because I was recording those on like the full screen so you could see like you could see all sorts of shit. You could see like my list of screenshots on my wallpaper. You could see all my like files and shit. You could basically see my my programs a trash bin it wasn't good looking the whole desktop you're not supposed to see the whole desktop you're supposed to see like a partial recording just the game that's it and halfway through the romancing saga LP that's like how many let's plays after my first one one two three four it's like, that was the sixth Let's Play. Now, when episode seven kicked in, it was lit because I started using a partial screen recording at the cost of being able to upload in high definition. That's okay, I was able to get past that. Although, now I'm starting to think that 360p is not enough. I'm starting to understand how different 360p looks from 720p or any other HD quality it's really different it doesn't compare like I'm starting to see how fuzzy it is it's not like I'm seeing big ass blocks like 240p looking like um watching some Atari shit, like I'm watching this from a flip phone. But even if it's not a flip phone style recording, it's not even the quality of something from that smartphone I have right in front of me right now. That, that shit could like upload in 4K. Like if I was that kind of guy where I would play a mobile game, that would be how I'd go about it. Otherwise, yeah, this has been a year of lots of LPing, lots of irrelevant shit, lots of stagnation. And I don't look back at this year negatively because of that. In terms of stagnation, in terms of all these things, yeah, that's not good. But I feel like I've. I'm a lot less ignorant about a lot of things, not just politically, not just in terms of gaming. I really know a lot more about my so-called favorite genre of video games now than I did when I started this year. I'm a lot more knowledgeable on that, and I feel good about it for some reason. Like, all this shit that I didn't know, now that I know it, it feel good about it. I feel like I have a bigger appreciation for the things that I love than most people. I feel like most people like a lot of things, but they don't really love it. Like, I see the way people talk about their so-called favorite rock bands. Opeth and Flames, where they say that because they change their style now, they're sellouts. And that could just be me talking about myself, where I feel like I've sold out a little bit, but not really, like, because they do something a little different, and you don't appreciate it, you're sellouts, like, right now, um, Square is bringing back the Saga series, I just played Romancing Saga a few months ago, third game, of course, I'm still waiting for the final version of the first two, which is closer than you think. I'm actually running with like an uh, an inferior version now of the first game, and I saw like a f so-called Square fan commenting on the announcement on a YouTube video, like 
really, out of all the games they could have brought back, they could have brought back the Chrono series, the Tactics Ogre series. I think maybe even the Mana series. Or some shit like that. Some irrelevant shit. But this guy was... He's made videos on Square. And he talked about how he's a gamer. But he doesn't have any like, respect for the Saga series. Like, get the hell out of here. That's probably the biggest Square franchise that's not Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy, or Dragon Quest. No joke, in terms of how much it sold and how much money it made. Even though us fans in the West don't really have an appreciation for it, I at least understand that the Saga series is a big deal. People in Japan really do look forward to stuff like this. But no, like, that's why I don't like about internet culture nowadays. That's why I don't really follow wrestling the way I used to, because... No one really, people act like they know this shit, but they don't really have respect for this shit. They don't have respect for the WWE because it's a sports entertainment company and they don't really get the sports entertainment side. They want it to be like a puro resu wannabe company. They want all these metal bands to be extreme metal. They don't want any melodicness, they don't want any any softness and I could understand, I like edgy shit too but I definitely don't think you should like everything about something you're a fan of a lot of Square games I'm not really about that much to be honest, I'm not really that big of a Mana fan. I don't I don't really think the Secret of Mana is all that. It doesn't look like it's that shit. But you know what? Doesn't mean I'm gonna act like a know it all and tell you why in a condescending f smug fashion. That's why I don't like about social media nowadays, it's too swipple. It's too fucking swipple. Brahmin, hipsterific. In fact, not even, because I know some, like, trashy people that do this kind of stuff, too, trying to signal that they're smarter than everybody else. People nowadays, all they know how to do is, like, smirk and shit. That's all they know how to do, man, like, Niggas ain't open-minded anymore. Never that. And we're going into politics. I want to keep this rant as disorderly as possible. Well, I wanted to be a controlled frenzy, actually. Going into politics, this is an even bigger issue because I think the Michael Brown, Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, Garner, Triple Threat, all three of them at once, that kind of killed politics for me when that shit happened. Because at that point, I realized that not even the topic of race is interesting anymore. It used to be that the racial narrative trumps all, and that's true in a descriptive objective sense it always goes back to race because that's pretty much the biggest issue in terms of identity politics in terms of just about anything else but nowadays that topic is just like it's all narrative now I think it's become completely schizophrenic when people talk about this racial shit. It's like, motherfuckers is tripping now. All they do is trip. Talk about this big, white, privileged narrative, or on the other side, how there's a big, anti-white, top-bottom genocide movement. 
the way white nationalists talk about white n genocide, it's really annoying. It's why I made stuff like that anti white nationalist blog post that ended up on TRS as well. Because, fuck, I hate that side of the alt right. I hate the side of the alt right that's obsessed with that fuel with no girlfriend. I'm obsessed with that side of the right that's. I hate that side of the right that's obsessed with feelings of white genocide. I'm exactly where I was when I started getting fed up with anarchism. Where I'm trying to just be the mediator. I see all the bull. I saw all the bullshit of anarchism, and I critique that. I try to make shit my own way, but I was tripping then, and it didn't work, and it sounded sloppy and schizophrenic. Or how some of my YouTube haters would say, confuse, boring, and confuse. And now I'm kind of like that with the all right too. I feel a smug and undeserved sense of superiority over a lot of this shit. Cause mostly because it's just dull. Most of it is dull. And this is coming from someone that hates. The animosity towards white, the idea of white privilege, idea of all these concerts we've made to like demonize the white race. I hate all of that shit. I can't stand feminism, yet I can't stand anti-feminism as a unit. I would never identify myself as anti-anything. Not even anti-social justice warrior. And the way I've hated on Tumblr, this is the year where I deleted my Tumblr. It tells me what kind of journey I've had with Tumblr. Because when I started critiquing some of the things in Tumblr, it wasn't the social justice shit. It was all the crappy black and white movie quotes in Tumblr about how the less you care less life hurts and the better you'll feel. I hated that idea, that pain and pleasure narrative. I hated uh, the self-harm side of it, the what was me side of Tumblr. And as things progressed, it became less about that special snowflake depressive side of Tumblr. They use that term a lot, depressive, and it has ultimately become about the SJW shit. So I think the internet is really a place where you can really become jaded in this kind of shit. And you can say that you're superior to all this shit on the internet, but in actuality, most people don't care about the stuff I'm talking about. So if I'm out here acting like I don't care either, then... I'm the biggest liar of them all. I'm trying to say it's been a year where I've said a lot of shit. I've been talking a lot of shit. 2013, I was all smiles. I was part of the alt-right community. Where I felt there was a brotherhood that was forming. But now I'm starting to think that. It should always be more than just that. Things should always make sense. If things start to sound like stupid BS, if things start to become insincere, and it's less about truth and more about groupthink, then me as an INT douche, I'm going to... I'm going to get turned off by that, eventually, sooner or later, and I have, and I think it's had a negative impact on my political shit. I think that the way I frame things, the way I've tried being edgy charian, being lawful, being chaotic, I was trying to be the voice of reason, while also being crazy as shit, that's not really good for anybody. 
But all that said, I really like this year. All my complaints aside, you can tell I like this year because I've been complaining about this kind of shit. I'm into it. I'm just into it in a different way now. It's no longer that I'm interested in all this kind of stuff. I can admit that most of what we talk about as a group is boring as a sphere in this internet. And I'm tired of the safe space shit. I think we should use YouTube as a place of discussion, as a place of debate for things that actually matter. And we're not going to get that out of speaking to a normal feds. If I speak to other people on political issues, they're just going to tell me, well, we don't know the whole story. The media isn't telling us everything. That's the opinion I hear from people that are basically telegraphing, okay, I'm stupid. That's every social justice warrior ever. It's every person with a biased opinion ever. Well, we don't know the whole story. They're not giving us all the information. I think the system, the government is hiding some stuff. Translation, I'm biased, but I know there's cognitive dissonance. I'm going to create the illusion that the situation is comfortably muddy, not that there's some cognitive dissonance spewing or stirring up a brewing. But now I'm just ranting on some shit that's going on in my head. 2015, guys. You have seen the birth of Chateau Autis this year, these past two months. I think Chateau Autiste is the future. I think that Chateau Autiste is our future. I think you and I should both, you know, the viewer and Wonkavelli here should both embrace the Chateau Autiste character, all that he stands for. Because that's what's going to take us to a new level. Where to, where's Bond? That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's been Mr. Wonka Velli. Mr. Wonka 7, Mr. Wonka Velli. What the fuck? I gotta, I gotta be more consistent with this shit. All these variations on my pseudonym. It's, it's quite disgusting. Yeah, suck my dick. Respect the king.